Today we're going to learn a little bit about JavaScript coding using Coding with Chrome. So I'm going to click on Coding with Chrome and that's going to open up my Coding with Chrome app. And you can see here we have a couple of options for things we can do. I'm going to go ahead and make that window nice and big. I'm going to click Code. So I click Code and uh, in our last lesson we learned a little bit about building websites with Coding with Chrome. Here I'm just going to select Basic Coding. So I'm just going to write some JavaScript. Uh, and you can see here this is going to open up our editor so we can start writing some code. So we're going to start off by writing a function. So a function is like a nice little self-contained piece of code that we can write in JavaScript that's going to allow us to do something over and over again. So I'm going to write a simple function. We'll write a function called write line. We'll say document.write text document.write So we have a couple of things going on here. I'm going to go through this step by step. So the first word here is function. And that's a keyword, which is something JavaScript understands. And it's going to tell JavaScript I'm going to build a function here. And I'm going to name it right line. So my function, as long as it starts with a letter, uh, can be letters, numbers, underscores, uh, but no, sim no special symbols. So my function is going to be called right line. And it's going to take a, a parameter. And this parameter is going to be called text. So what actually I'm going to do with text is I'm going to write it out to my browser over here. And then I'm going to write a line break. So this, this browser is actually going to be interpreting HTML. So if I didn't include this line, what I would actually end up with is just text that comes together over and over again. So if I, you know, for example, if I remove this line and I use write line, hello, write line, my name is Tim. What you actually see here is everything kind of runs together. So that's why we need this line here. We need to have that write BR because this instructs HTML that we need to put a line break. Uh, so here you can see on the right now we have exactly what we would expect. So write line allows us to say, take this text we're going to pass in, hello, and we're going to write that out to the browser and then we're going to write an end line. And then we're going to take this next text, my name is Tim, and we're going to write that out to the browser and we're going to write an end line. So this way I can reuse this simple function over and over again. Now when I say hello, we call this a string in programming. Any type of text, we just refer to that as a string. And when I pass that in, that actually becomes the value of text. So in this case, text is a parameter, and text is going to take the value of something that we give the function. So right line on line 7 here, you can see right line hello. That's going to make hello the text value. And on line 8, it's going to make my name is Tim the text value. So this is, this is the basics of how a function works, and I can use a function for a couple of different things. Now, in my first function, I'm, use, I'm writing text, uh, but, or, or a string here, but I might actually want to write a function that also uses a number, for example. So one thing we could do, you know, we could do simple arithmetic down here in our code. We could say something like write line, uh, you know, 3 times 3 times 3. That'll give us 27. So here we're actually passing in a number to our, our value or our function. We're uh, passing in a number which is going to take the value of text. And then document.write will just write out whether or not it's a number or it's text or whatever it is. But let's go ahead and write a function so that we can use cubing over and over again. So function cube, we'll go ahead and pass in a value called num. And we will just return num times num times num. So this function is a little bit different, whereas the first function we wrote, right line, actually just does something. This is going to compute something and then return a value. So this return on line two is actually telling JavaScript, when you're finished with this function, go ahead and return some value. So I could do something like this. I could say I could create a variable. A variable is kind of like a parameter. It's just a place to store something. But I'm going to create a variable, and we'll call this variable number. And we'll say number is seven. And we'll say number, we'll say var number cubed is equal to cube number. And then we can say right line number, right line number cubed. And you can see here this is going to give us uh, oh, see, I've got a mistake here. This is our syntax, and you can see here this is saying, oh, you've made a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and change that and spell number cubed properly. And now you can see 7 times 7 times 7 is definitely 343. So we can use, uh, we can use these functions for numerical calculations as well as just simple text. 
Now, if I wanted to write a, a function that would just tell me, you know, what values are, maybe I might do something like this. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that code. Maybe I'm going to write a function now that says, fun we'll call this write cubed. And this function now is going to call some other functions. So now instead of having a function where, or instead of having code where I'm writing everything out to text here, I'm going to go ahead and write this function. We'll say, uh, the first thing we'll do is say cubed is equal to cube num. So now we're creating this new variable inside the function. And then we're going to use document.write. And we'll say num document.write. And then we'll write something else here. Cubed is right line cubed. So now what this function is going to do when we use it, we'll go ahead and write it down here. We'll say write cubed, uh, say 7. What we'll get is some text. 7 cubed is 343. So see how this actually works. What happens is JavaScript, if it's looking at this line by line, it's reading in my first function, my function called write cubed, and it's determining, all right, we're going to take the cube of this value, and we're going to write that out, and we're going to write out some more text, and then we're going to write out another number, and I'm going to call these other functions. Note that I'm able to call these functions before they're defined, because JavaScript's first going to look for all of the functions that I've written and actually try to uh, build something out of those. So now we have write cubed. Uh, it's going to call this uh, cube function. We're going to write that value out. We're going to write out some text. We're going to write out the result of that value, or that calculation. We could actually make this simpler if we want. We could actually just take cube here, and we could chain that right into this, uh, this function down at the bottom, and that works just the same way. Uh, we're going to multiply number times number times number. Uh, right line is going to write that out, and then when we get down to the bottom, it's going to say, okay, let's call this function right cubed. We're going to go up to the top on line one, we're going to write out the number, we're going to write out some text, and then we're going to write out cube, which is going to call into this function. So see how JavaScript is jumping around to do different calculations, but since I'm using functions, everything becomes a lot more obvious what I'm actually trying to do. You know, it makes, mu makes it much more human readable. It's easier to understand. So what we're going to do now is, uh, you know, let's say we have this write cubed function. We could actually use a loop to write this out over and over again. So I could use Let's say we'll create a variable here. We'll say variable counter is equal to 1. And we'll say while counter is less than or equal to 10. We're going to write cubed counter. And then set counter equal to counter minus, or plus 1. So notice how this is now writing out a lot of text on the right side in our browser. What we have is uh, we have counter equal to 1, um, where we're just creating a new variable. We're setting it equal to 1. Now we're using a while loop. So what we're saying here is while counter is less than 10, uh, less than or equal to 10, notice here we use less than and equal, we're going to continue to execute these statements over and over again until we, as long as this is true. So while counter is less than or equal to 10, we're going to call the function right cubed for counter, then we're going to increase counter by one. So counter is going to be set equal to counter plus one. Now if you were looking at this from a mathematical perspective, you would say, well, counter can't possibly be equal to counter plus one, but it's not actually making a mathematical statement. It's actually saying, asking JavaScript to take the variable counter and set it equal to the value of whatever was in counter plus one. So it's going to evaluate this right side and then assign that to the variable counter. So you can see here on the right side, that this is working exactly as we would expect. We're creating this counter variable where while the counter is less than or equal to 10, we're going to write it out, and then we're going to increase it. Now, if we didn't actually use this line, if we take this line out, what actually happens is it actually doesn't do anything because it keeps running and running and running because we've set counter equal to 1, but we've never actually, uh, we've never actually done anything to change the value. So that's what we call an infinite loop. And infinite loops are pr a pretty common problem for programmers because if you don't do anything to increase the value in your loops, if you're always counting, they can go on forever. So once we change that back, you can see on, in our browser we're, we're getting exactly what we expect. Now we could also do some more mathematical calculations. In fact, we could use a mathematical calculation using a, a while loop. So if I wanted to find another mathematical function up here, we'll go ahead and use function factorial. 
and a factorial is just a number multiplied by let one less than the number multiplied by one less than that number multiplied by one less than that number until we get down to one. So we can use that kind of repetition and we can write that with a loop. We'll go ahead and create a variable called result and we'll set result equal to one. You know, we'll start off with one and what we're going to do is multiply uh, until we get to that value. So let's say var um, uh, reduce, we'll set reduce equal to num and we will say while reduce is greater than or equal to one because we're going to keep uh, keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying we're going to say result is equal to result times reduce then we will return our result so now our factorial function it's going to start off by saying all right we're going to start with one and then we're going to start with this number and as long as we move downward uh, we need to actually say reduce is equal to reduce minus one so we're going to continue counting down until we get to one so this is going to now say you know if we pass in five or let's start with a smaller number let's say three we pass in three redu result will be equal to one reduce will be equal to three and then while reduce is greater than or equal to one so it is it's three we're going to say our result is equal to one times three and then we're going to set reduce equal to one less than three you know three minus one so we're gonna have two reduce is still greater than or equal to one so we will set result equal to result which was three now we're going to multiply that by two so we're gonna get six and then reduce is going to be equal to reduce minus one so two is equal to two minus one which is now going to end up with one reduce is still greater than or equal to one so we're going to multiply our result which is six times reduce which is uh, which is now one so this last round is probably not even necessary we could just say while well, reduce is greater than one and it's going to work the same way so now if we want to test to make sure that works let's see we'll say var f or var number is equal to three var f is equal to factorial of number right line f what we get here is six just like we expect and if we change this to four you'll see that'll give us four factorial which is 24 and if we change this to five we'll get 120 so you can see here we're able to uh, identify you know that this is actually working but let's go ahead and write another uh, helper function here we'll say write factorial for the name of this function and we will use this just like we had write cube we'll say document dot write num and we'll say document dot write factorial is document dot write factorial num so now we have this nice or actually we'll change this to a right line so we uh so we'll get the end lines properly so now we have this nice function and we could use that instead of all of this code we have down here on line 38 through 40. You can see how writing this function makes it simpler and I will just write write factorial. Uh, we'll pass in let's say 5 and now you see 5 factorial is 120. So it, it functions help us to make our code cleaner by replacing a lot of lines of code. Now if we wanted to write a lot of factorials now we could say alright we're gonna set that counter variable back to 1 the counter variable we defined on line 32 here and we're going to say while counter is less than or equal to 10 we'll do the same thing again oh, I made an error here let's go ahead and retype that we will write factorial of the counter and then we will write or we will set counter equal to counter plus one so now you can see our cubes you know if we want to make this a little cleaner we can just write line We'll write nothing to that line just to put a nice space in between here and uh, here we'll say one fa we'll get one is cubed and then all the way down to 10 and then we'll get one factorial all the way down to 10. So just a simple example showing how you can write functions and code a little bit more easily and simply using uh, some JavaScript. Thanks for uh, watching we'll uh, have some follow-up uh, exercises here as well so uh, I hope you enjoy this I hope this kind of gets you a little interested in, in programming and uh, We'll continue.